if we want to solve differential equations, we have to compute the matrix exponential function. For a diagonalizable matrix, this is easy. e to the power dt is a diagonal matrix with e to the power lambda t on the diagonal. But what if you have a Jordan canonical form? In that case, we can also compute the matrix exponential function, and the result is surprisingly easy, as you will see in this video. We'll do it for the specific example here. A 3x3 three three matrix with one Jordan block, lambdas on the diagonal, and the ones over here. I want to compute e to the power at. So by definition, what you need is uh, the sum over here, so identity plus at plus at squared over 2, and so on and so forth. So you need powers of your matrix A. However, it is easier to do a small trick if your A equals J lambda. So we want to compute e to the power AT, but instead we compute J lambda minus lambda I times T. And if you subtract minus lambda I, you have to add a lambda I over here. And why do we do that? Well, if you have e to the power A plus B, then you can write it as a to the power A times a to the power B. Okay, that's what we do. This second term, e to the power lambda i t, well, lambda i t is just diagonal, so the second exponential is easy. And this first exponential turns out to be easy as well. We'll see why. Because if we compute j lambda minus lambda i, we basically subtract all the lambdas from our uh, j lambda. So we're left with only the ones over here. Multiply by t, that doesn't really matter, of course, and you get t's over there, and zeros uh, everywhere else. So what's so nice about this, if you start squaring this matrix, you get more and more zeros. So if you have j lambda minus lambda i times c, if you square it once, uh, you only have one non-zero element left, t squared over there, and if you square again, you have only zeros left. You have the zero matrix. So using this, we can compute e to the power uh, j lambda minus lambda i times t, because you have only the first few terms in this power series expansion. Your e to the power j lambda minus lambda i times t gives you the first term, plus the, uh, this term over here, that one, plus one half times this, this matrix, so that, that one, and then that's the end of the series, because the next matrix equals zero and remains zero. So your e to the power j lambda minus lambda i times t is just a sum of those three matrices. So you get this matrix over here. And you see at the pattern, you have ones on the diagonal, then t's, then t squared over two. And if you will go, would go on, if you would have a bigger Jordan block, you have ones, t, t squared over 2, t cubed over 3 factorial, t to the power 4 over 4 factorial, until you run out of your matrix. So in this way, you can compute e to the power j lambda minus lambda items t for any Jordan block. You recognize the pattern. And then e to the power a t is easy, because you only have to multiply by e to the power lambda items t. But this multiplication only gives you an e to the power lambda t on all elements. So what you get is the same matrix, but then uh, all elements multiplied by e to the power lambda t. So there you have e to the power a t if a equals uh, a Jordan matrix. So what if you have bigger Jordan blocks? We discussed it, that's clear. What if you have more than one Jordan block? Well, that's also an, uh, uh, easy. If you have two, you can do them separately. And e to the power a t gives you just the exponents of the two separate blocks. And what if you are not a Jordan canonical form, but if you are similar to a Jordan canonical form, so a is p, gcf, p inverse, well, we can do exactly the same trick as if when a was similar to d, what you get is e to the power a t equals p and p inverse uh, on the side, and in the, in the middle, e to the power gcf times t. And we know how to do the one in the middle, so now can we, so now we can compute the uh, e to the power a t if a is either a Jordan canonical form or if a is similar to a Jordan canonical form. 